Sarah here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and in this video we are making a Rubik's Cube. Oh my goodness I am so excited about this make. I was thinking about making this and I thought hmm you know it's a challenge so I loved making it. So first of all which colours to use then of course how to make the little squares and then of course how to keep the square shape the cube shape in a stuffed item so i think i have achieved quite a lot of those things so let me show you how to make this first of all we are going to need some colors so of course you are going to need black for joining it all together then we have spice we have aster we have lipstick we have kelly green citron and white and these are all stylecraft special decay colors and they are meant for a four millimeter hook so it's a dk yarn but of course i use a three and a half for my tension so i would suggest you use the hook that you usually use for a dk yarn you will also need your scissors of course your darning needle and you also need some stuffing so this is just soft toy filling stuffing that I have and that I get in my local haberdashery. And what you also will need are some squares that I have cut to size, to the size of my little panel here. And that is made of stabilizer foam. So this is the stabilizer that I buy for making my bags and I just cut it to size six of them to put into my cube so let's get started on creating the rubik's cube i think i'm going to have a bit of work trying to solve it here <laughs> do you want to try so first of all let me show you how to make the little squares now we have six colors and each color will need nine squares so we're going to get started by doing a magic circle. So you wind your yarn around your finger so you have a little cross like this. You go under this strand here, picking up the back strand, bringing it to the front, then going back to that same back strand, picking it up and doing a little chain like so. And you take your fingers out and then you can get started with doing your stitches which you will place around the part of the magic circle with the two strands so first of all we're going to do three half double crochets so you yarn over you go into the magic circle and you pull up a loop you yarn over and you pull through the three loops on your hook and we do that two more times So now I've done my three half double crochets. So now I'm doing a double crochet. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now I'm going to be doing another set of three half double crochets. So one, two, and three and another double crochet there we go so now making sure that you keep pulling this gently so you always have two strands to work over another set of three half double crochets and a double crochet so in effect, we've now done one side, a corner, one side, a corner, one side and a corner. So we've done three sides. Now for the fourth side, three half double crochets. One, two and three. And of course, also a fourth corner. So we do another double crochet. And now we've done all the stitches we need to do for our little square. So now you're going to hold it all nicely, flat like this between your fingers, pull gently on the end of your magic circle and pull, pull, pull 
and as you see it's come together and where the double crochets are are my corners and where my half double crochets are are my sides so now we are going to look at where we started we've got two v's here a third one there this one we are going to skip so we are going to go under the next one do a slip stitch and this then becomes our third v on this side so you have per side four v's making up the side and a corner and that is it this is our square so now we cut off the yarn we sew in the ends and then we are ready to start making our cube so of course you now have to make nine of these of this color of this color of every color that we have in our rubik's cube and then of course we are going to have to put them all together with black because that's what the main part of the rubik's cube is made of so i'm going to take all my little squares and put them in my yarn bowl and i am going to be doing blind dip with them so just choosing them from my bowl without looking <laughs> this is where the fun starts so now i can start putting my six little panels together of nine little squares each and of course i am not going to be making mine in the colors i'm just going to do the blind dip and go for a you know a muddled up um a rubik's cube so by the way i am using my yarn bowl which i made quite a few videos ago so do go and have a look at that tutorial i shall link it down below so at the moment it is my blind dip bowl and it's quite nice i see in my viewfinder that you can see what's in there but to be honest when i look at it from underneath my viewfinder i can't see what's in there so that's perfect it's perfectly blind so yeah i've got this one so that's what i'm going to get started with so let's get the black make your slip knot and insert your hook so you need to decide one two three four these are my four stitches of my side so you're going to go into the back loop with the good side facing towards you the back loop from the top to the bottom okay making sure you have your yarn below you'll see why in a moment i'm going to get a second one red okay so here you're going to do the same thing find the four of a side where am i here one two three four yeah so here of a side so there we go also into sorry let me get out again i've enlarged it so you will see it now so you've got your front here of your little square this is the v you take the back loop but also from the top to the bottom then you turn them both over you wrap your yarn around your hook and then you have to come back out through that stitch through this stitch and then tighten it all by pulling here and then through the loop on your hook okay so we're going to be using slip stitches and the slip stitches are going to be placed in the back loop so back loop from this one from the top to the bottom and the back loop from that one also from the top to the bottom can you see how i've gone through it there and then here you have your yarn underneath because that's where you need it to just wrap around your hook and then bring it up first through that red one then through the spice one and there we go okay so this is how we are going to be crocheting our little panels together so per panel we will be doing four joins and we will be making panels of nine little squares so three three and three have i done four one two three four so there we go so i've done four now i do a chain just so that i can bridge the gap when i'm coming back the other way and once again 
I'm going to do blind dips. So don't look in the viewfinder. I can't see any colour. What have I got? Blue. Good. So make sure you have the front. One, two, three, four. Here we are going to go in there. Again, making sure the yarn is at the base. Another one. And this is what I like so much. Oh, I've got to do it again. Um, this is what I like so much because, of course, this is random now. Uh, one, two, three, four. So here, this is my fourth one. There we go. Yarn underneath. Loop it round and bring it through the stitches and through the loop on your hook. And then, of course, you have three more stitches to do. And once you get used to the little movements you have to do, it will be come a little bit easier make sure yeah i didn't go into anything there make sure you don't <laughs> don't miss a stitch go into the back loops bring it through bring it through and through the loop um this will be like i said a slip stitch join um but we are going to put the panels together with a different join because I felt that it, I wanted it to stand up and this join had to be flat because that's, you know, sort of more realistic. Okay, right, let me show you another one. Green again, yeah, that happens. There we go, and another one. And yellow, had we had yellow? No, not yet. So there we go. Also into those stitches and bring it back. Did I do a chain in between? No, I did not. I was too enthusiastic. Right, chain in between. <laughs> back into those back loops. There we go. And this is great fun doing it like this. So we are making six panels. And of course, now I have done my three little colour squares in a row, in a moment, of course. And now we are going to be adhering the third row onto that. But you need to make sure that nothing gets twisted. OK, so just pay attention before you start. See, I've got all the fronts here likely when you're working here that this will be turning around so make sure it doesn't when you start working on it so another little chain there to do then cut off the yarn there we go see so that's our first row done so now once again exactly the same thing as we did before make your slip knot insert your hook and we are going to blind dip. I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Blue. <laughs> and you go into the stitch that you're going to use. There we go, keeping the yarn down. And then of course here we pick up our orange, find the back loop and start using our black, bring it through and through. And so this way, we have now started our third row. So here I sewn in an end. So just see what you can pick up. If you have to, you might need to turn the hook to get into it. But generally, you know, the V is there, so you'll be able to find it. I am sure if you need to assist it. There we go. <laughs> It will all work out. Oh, something split there. Yeah, I'll have to do that one again. So I like to wrap my yarn around my hook because I find it stays behind the hook easier. There we go. And this way we do a really neat slip stitch that lies in between our two squares and that works perfectly for what we needed so there we go another one i want oh no not another blue one oh well i've got to go for it now i am doing blind dip <laughs> look 
this cube is going to be really difficult to fix, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I am having too much fun, I'm sure. <laughs> right, so I just continue doing my slip stitch in my back loops only. What other colour shall it be next? I'm hoping for a white. I am going to close my eyes. There we go. I'll do that's four. OK, right. Close my eyes. <laughs> this is fun. What is it? Can you tell me? It's it's green. Oh, well. <sighs> Never mind. This is the fun. This is the fun part. There we go. We let destiny decide. There we go. So we've made the horizontal ones and now we're going to make the vertical ones and they are done exactly the same. But of course, you don't have to blind dip because you've already got your square. So this is easier in a way. So let's get started on doing those. We are going to start with doing our slip knot and you insert your hook and you do a chain. Then we go over to our work here and making sure you've got your yarn below you're going to go in to the fourth stitch so one two three four so this one will be the corner one so keeping your yarn underneath let me just hold it properly then going to the fourth one here one two three four you go into that one you know the back loop only from the top and then you wrap around your working yarn, bring it through, bring it through, and then, of course, pull it slightly so it all gets a little bit tighter. And there we go. So that means we have started in the right place. Now we pick up the back loops from the top each time, bring through our yarn and do a slip stitch. There we go each time bringing back the yarn, doing the slip stitch. And then of course, after you've done the fourth one, you're going to do a chain. But of course, before we just did the chain, but here we have another row of chains to deal with. So I'm just going to go into that chain, just in whatever you can get into, bring back the yarn and do your slip stitch so we've done a chain but you've connected it to that previous row there and then you go and you find the back loop only from the adjacent next squares and you do a slip stitch so at the end of your little row here once again the last slip stitch there we go I do a chain just so that I have a little bit to work with in my next part of the project. There we go. So I shall cut this off and I shall make another four of these. So I have now made six of these panels. I had so much fun making these, oh my goodness. And because I was on a roll, I have already attached four of these panels together. So I don't know whether you can see, so this is one panel, then this is a join, then this is another panel, this is a join, another panel and a join and another panel. Now this is a single crochet join. So I am taking up the inner loops with a single crochet. I'll show you in a moment. But this is what you will need to make first. So you do those three joins after you have made your six panels. In the same way as I've done these joins, I am going to attach one of these on top of there. OK, because that's how it goes when you're making a cube. That's how you have to do it. 
So let me just show you how to go about doing these joints. So we are going to make our slip knot, insert your hook, do a chain, always start with a chain. Then we are going to hold our two little panels together. So the good sides on the outside and you go and you find your fourth stitch. So one, two, three, four, this is the one, fourth stitch, back loop. Then here, one, two, three, four, this is the fourth. They're also the back loop. So hold them together, point your hook down, making sure you're now not working with the end here that I'm holding in <laughs> my other hand. I am going to start with bringing through the yarn, through the yellow, through the green, and now I am doing a single crochet. There we go. And this is how you will continue all along your three little squares here to the end of your row. So now that we have come to the end of this little join here and we have this configuration, we are going to have to connect this side to this side here. Okay, and before we do that, we're going to go into the join and do a little chain just so that it's connected. It's a bit closer together then. And then we are going to get started by joining these two sides. So again, same thing. You go into your stitches, picking up all the inner loops and you work your way along your little squares, making sure that it all tallies up, which it's only doing just. <laughs> But it's okay, I can just make sure it does. There we go, that's fine. <laughs> then, voila. So I've made it to the end of my little square here. I now have this situation where we have three sides connected. Now, of course, we do the next side. So we're going to go and do that one. So first of all, I'm going to go into the join here just to do a little slip stitch, just to connect the corner there. And then once again, I am going to be tallying up my stitches. I'm even picking up the corner stitches double, so it doesn't matter, just so as long as it looks neat and it looks all nicely connected. There we go. So then here, can I go into my black? Of course, I've already sewn in my ends. So just see if I can manage to get in there and in there. I mean, you don't have to, but just see what can be done and how well you can attach this. So I'm now going for it. I'm really, I'm reusing the corner ones as well as the ones that have not been connected yet. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so you're going to continue putting this together until you have done all the four sides and you have to do this one here. So I have now made it all the way around this square. So I now have this situation here. And now we are going to close up this side and then we'll do the lid. <laughs> so there we go. So let's go into the black join here first for a slip stitch, just to sort of close that up a little bit. And then we can get started, of course, on here. Again, picking up the inner loops, the back loop only. Oh, something split there and doing our single crochet. So there we go. I've really enjoyed making this. Hmm. If only it was as easy <laughs> to solve the <laughs> to solve the Rubik's Cube as it is to make this one here. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see if I can do a little stitch there. There we go. And off to the next little few squares there. So I've made it to the end of this little join here and now I have this. And to be honest, this could be a lovely little pot to keep things in, um, you know, if you make it made a little lining for it. But anyway, I'm going to finish it. OK, so let's get started. Find the back loop one to yeah, the, this one here. And there we go. So let's do two sides, then stuff it and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is where I'm at now. So I still need to do two sides, but of course we need to stuff it. Now, I am hoping that these will help to keep the sides straight up. We do want to stuff it well, but not so that the side starts bulging out. So we're going to place these into the cube and make sure that they sit in the seams really well. Again, I was going to put a load, load, load in, but then, of course, it's going to start bulging out. So just enough to fill it. There we go. OK, now we are going to keep crocheting. So I've got another side closed up. So this is when it becomes fun, of course, trying to work with all the stuff in there. Let me just do a little slip stitch here. So that closes that then let's start doing single crochets here and here yeah I would say just do your best see how it goes take your time push everything in well where is that second one there there we go yes it's impossible to hold on to it and hold it in the viewfinder So I've now closed up three sides. This one, just pushing that one in a little bit more. Look, that works really well. And I think it isn't bulging all that much. So just try and push it in a little bit. Yeah, look at that. OK, so just closing up this last bit. OK, right, let's do the last bit here. <laughs> look at this. OK, so I have two more stitches to do. So just again into those corner ones here, just so it's finished my little row here. And then just to make these two meet up, I'm just going to go into the stitch here and do a little slip stitch just so that it closes sort of the round, closes that corner up. And look at that. <laughs> I'm really pleased with that. So I'm cutting off this yarn. And then to be honest, I'm just going to go in with my hook, come out this end and pull it in and pull it in. So, yeah, so making sure it's in for a little while. Cut it off and there we have it. So we have one crocheted Rubik's Cube. Oh, my goodness. I really, really love it. I hope you enjoy making yours. I look forward to seeing your version of the Rubik's Cube. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.